there and welcome back to another Miraculous Ladybug Season 5 review. And today we're going to be talking about the latest episode to drop, Revolution, which is the episode set just before representation, and tells the story of how Adrian ends up going to London, and how Marinette ends up heartbroken attending the end of year dance. So it's a pretty important episode, and one that really needed to deliver big time, as, you know, well, season 5's been a bit hit or miss. Let's be honest, it's been hot and cold. Sometimes, there's really good episodes. And then sometimes the episodes just leave you scratching your head and wondering where everything went wrong. And I was hoping that this episode would be one of the former. But I don't know, at times I felt like whilst this episode was decent, it was also devoid of any sort of logic or sense. Just kind of felt stupid for watching it. Insulting to one's intelligence in many aspects. So yeah, anyway, with all that being said, let's jump into the episode. So remember, the episode follows off from that really dumb cliffhanger where Chloe is somehow able to pronounce herself the interim mayor of Paris, a role that's going to last until she sets up some sort of democratic election, elections that she very obviously is not intending to follow through with. But regardless, she declares that all miraculous wielders, so Monarch, Cat Noir, and Ladybug, are outlaws, and that up until the elections, her robots are going to uphold law and order in Paris. So she's pretty much declared martial law. A child has taken control of City Hall with the help of robotic soldiers, and nobody in France is doing anything about this. Really? Did the police just up and quit? What about the army? The president of France. Like, this storyline's just the peak of stupidity. It's treating the position of mayor of Paris, mayor of the city, like it means she's the empress of France with complete and absolute power. She's not Napoleon. How has she not been swarmed with SWAT teams and agents and whatnot? Surely priority number one for France would be ensuring that this random rich kid does not successfully pull off a coup within the city. Like, come on now. Meanwhile, our two superheroes do absolutely nothing to stop this from happening. Cat Noir does think they should intervene, but Ladybug thinks otherwise, as it would be a pretty terrible look for them to burst into City Hall, beat up somebody who's not akumatized, and declare that she is not the rightful mayor. And I guess, on one hand, perhaps Ladybug's right. It would be a bad look for a superhero to throw around their weight like that. However though, Chloe is clearly seizing power. Like, what's going on here? But regardless, they don't do anything, and they wait for somebody else to do it. Hmm. If only there was somebody who had the legal right and responsibility to do something about this. Oh wait, there is, but not in this show apparently. Marinette then goes home and watches a news broadcast where the opinions of the people are heard, and apparently two-thirds of Paris is inhabited by smooth-brained buffoons supportive of a coup by a child. At least, if this Vox Pop cross-section is to be believed. Only one person actually tells it how it is, that this random teenager with a robot army is not the best choice for any sort of government at all. But whatever, the story just wants us to ignore how weird all of this is. I get it. You know what's more important though? Idiot Adrian still hasn't told his girlfriend he's being forced to move to London by his dad. I mean, come on. If even Plague thinks you're being reckless, you know you've gone too far with this. Like, what's the end game? He knows he's literally moments away from being swept off to London forever. Is the dude in denial about managing to figure out a solution? Is he that dumb? Well, <laughs> yeah, kind of. Anyway, he caves and decides to tell Marinette when she calls him, only for her to start immediately ranting about how they all need to get together and do something to put a stop to Chloe, before just straight up hanging up on his ass. And this in turn shatters his confidence and pushes the issue to the back once more, which will of course lead to disaster. I mean, surely at this point, just the best idea would be to send out a text to Marinette and hope for the best. Oh, and look, he turns on the TV, and there's more idiots that don't seem all that concerned. Also, side note about Marinette, imagine not listening to your boyfriend as he tells you there's something he wants to tell you, but instead bulldozing the conversation completely, giving him orders on what to do, and then just hanging up on him. Damn, Marinette. Damn. Over in the hotel, Chloe's playing with her robots and fires the butler, which, damn, there goes that dude's career. Whilst Gabe and Madame Sarugi blow smoke up Chloe's ass about what a great administrator she is. After all, she personally chased the super-powered people into hiding. And I mean, this is a pretty big call considering it's been a single day, and since there's been no akumatization event, there's no real proof as to whether the heroes would hide. But sure, of course it's likely Gabe's plan to stroke her ego, so it does make sense. And all the while, Lila keeps pulling on those puppet strings as well. Getting ready for the big bamboozle. The double betrayal, where they all betray Chloe. And yep, Chloe's still sitting in City Hall as well. She is still the mayor by that evening, with no authority figures in sight to do anything about it. No intervention of any sort, despite this being an unlawful seizure of power. And I'm pretty sure the age requirement to hold office in France is 18. I don't think she's 18. 
But yes, once again, let's just ignore all the logic, please and thank you. Anyway, after a pointless evil discussion between Monarch and Madame Sarugi, Gabe teleports to Chloe to offer her a deal. He akumatizes her and powers up her little robots with a bunch of miraculous powers. And so now, she gets to use them as she wants and take all the credit, and of course, all the while, this just plays into our villain's hands, who are planning to double-cross her when they can get the Miraculouses. And of course, since Chloe is an idiot, she's going to walk right into the trap. I mean, come on. Who would actually ever trust somebody like Lila? Or Monarch? What a fool. Seriously, it beggars belief somebody could actually be this stupid. I mean, it fits her character, or at least the way they've written her character the last couple seasons, but still, <laughs> imagine being so dumb that even smooth-brained Gabe can defeat you in a battle of wits. That's sad. Adrian then turns up at school, ready to tell Marinette the truth, but oh no, foiled again. Looks like they've set up a protest at the school, demanding that Chloe reinstates Mr. Damocles and Ms. Bustier. And obviously, this is a terrible plan that's never going to work because Chloe is just the worst. I mean, did they not realize this literally the day before when she got Marinette expelled, when she got Damocles and Ms. Bustier fired and put herself into power with an army of robots? I mean, has an actual dictator ever listened to a peaceful protest in the history of the world? I don't know, but she certainly isn't going to. And surprise, surprise, she does not listen to this peaceful protest and even threatens Marinette along the way, desiring to reveal to her that Adrian's leaving, but Lila calls her off for the time being. And all of this was recorded on TV, and yet still nobody's doing shit. The first thing I'm doing, if I'm a citizen of France in the aftermath of this event, is calling for a federal election. God damn, president, army generals, police, where you at? I keep saying it, and I'll keep saying it forever if I have to. I don't care how much I repeat myself. It's ridiculous. My IQ is dropping. My brain cells are dying. But yeah, Chloe tries to play all of this off, as if these peaceful protesters are threatening her, which is obviously not the case, and everything's on TV, so I don't know how anyone buys this. But sure, why not? And then she goes into her exclusive class, where the school principal gives a specialized lecture about how great Chloe is. <laughs> Imagine being so much of a spineless worm that you actually bother to make the lecture slides and the lesson plan for this. Where's the self-respect? And in the chaos of all of this, Milan and Ivan are the first robot abduction victims, or the first that we see on screen. So yep, they got snatched, see ya. And all the while, Ladybug and Catwa are still sitting on their asses doing nothing. Hell, why at minimum don't they swing by the president's house to see what's going on? Pretty sure they could get in. I mean, they're bulletproof super soldiers. But no, they wash their hands of the turmoil in Paris. I mean, in a previous episode, didn't they once fight off dinosaurs that some idiot mad scientist lost control of? I don't think that was from an Akuma, was it? I can't recall, but it didn't seem like it was. So what's up with them doing nothing now? Seriously, this whole bystander stick feels very forced to make the plot go in a certain direction. As opposed to what I think the heroes would actually do, especially with someone like Chloe steering the ship. But yes, instead of doing that, our heroes go for ice cream. And at the same time, it's hinted that now Alia has been kidnapped and yet still, they do nothing. Before Chloe appears flying through the sky in a helicopter, and Andre, the ice cream man, is straight up shut down for not having a proper permit, which he says he doesn't need. But a quick Google search will tell you that yes, you do need one, Andre. Like, no shit, come on, mate. You need a permit. You're a food cart. You need this. You have to pay for a license. You need to have hygiene inspectors come by and see what you're doing. And from what I've read on my random become a food cart person website, a place like Paris would actually be super hard to break into as a food cart. Hard to get that parking permit, especially on somewhere as busy as that bridge. So that being said, it would be quite expensive. And so therefore, has he been doing this illegally this whole time? Hate to say it, but Chloe here is simply dispensing justice by sending him packing. The dude is liable for some significant fines for this tomfoolery. Andre, you're a hack. Next up. <laughs> Marinette then goes home and surprise, surprise, Chloe is waiting for her, having already put her parents in detention for trying to make her pay for stuff from the bakery. Oh, Chloe, you went from fighting the good fight against Andre to being corrupt again. Why? But yeah, she then gets Marinette as well. And yeah, this is probably the moment that Marinette realizes that, oopsie, probably should have tried to do something about Chloe when she was Ladybug. But now she's in prison. Oopsie. But of course, Chloe's reign of terror does not end here, as next up she goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Adrian, who turns up at the bakery, only to find it deserted, which he pretty quickly realizes is because of Chloe. So he marches down to City Hall, and finally, at long last, Chloe takes off the kitty gloves. 
and she straight up bullies him in the way that she does to literally every other character. Mocking him, laughing at him, cutting remarks, that sort of thing. And then she even blackmails him, or at least tries to. And when he resists, see ya, off to prison. And in prison, nobody seems to actually want to try to escape. They literally all just walk around looking sad, like, come on, at least try it. We see later on there's not even a roof. Make a human ladder. What is going on here? At least Marinette and Adrian have some sort of brain. They immediately manage to each individually come up with the same plan. Trick the robots into knocking down one of the screens so they can hide behind it to transform. And so Adrian turns into Cat Noir and blasts a hole in the floor, giving all the prisoners an escape route down into the sewers. And of course, it's the sewers. Of course it's the sewers. Ugh. Who doesn't regularly love walking near shit water? Ugh. Look how green it is. Imagine how bad it smells. I can't believe some of the characters swim in that sometimes. Ugh. And then Marinette also transforms and she leaps out of the ceiling. And I gotta say, really, prison doesn't have a roof. <laughs> why? Just why? Why doesn't it have a roof? Duh. Also, why is it just in the middle of Paris? If you're gonna build your secret evil prison and have teleporters send people there, put it somewhere that they can't escape from. Somewhere dangerous. I don't know, near a volcano, in the middle of the Arctic. Just spitballing here. Moving on, we then see that Chloe's holding a press conference where she's talking a big game about how she's the best, how she fixed Paris, yada, 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 and how if there was an election, she would clearly win. Which, nah, I'll press X to doubt on that one. Ladybug and Cat Noir arrive, all ready to fight, and they're instantly defeated after giving an inspirational speech about democracy. That would be pretty embarrassing, hey? It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Imagine being so easily defeated by such a smooth brain, right after hyping yourself up to be the hero who's going to save the day. And all the while, Gabe and Madame Sarugi are getting ready to betray Chloe and retake control of all the robots, and then steal the miraculouses away from Ladybug and Cat Noir. And honestly, barring absurd plot armor, they have this in the bag. Nothing could possibly go wrong here. It's over. The villains have won at long last. But of course, there's plot armor. And then Ladybug has the audacity to pretend like it's both her and Cat Noir that made a mistake by not intervening earlier. Conveniently forgetting that he actually suggested to go and help, only for her to talk him down twice. Let's not slander my boy, please and thank you. Oh, and all the while, they're about to detransform, but luckily for them, it is the slowest detransform of all time. Like, it never goes that slowly, I'm sorry. And so this gives them the time to figure out how to slow it down even more, coming to an almost complete halt. And I mean, I thought initially, oh, they've been resisting the whole time. But the episode goes out of its way to tell you that Adrian only starts resisting when Ladybug tells him to. So why was his detransformation so slow? Honestly, this is outrageous plot armor. Come on. Anyway, Ladybug manages to get the crowd to start a riot in true Parisian fashion. And for some reason, Kim has stripped down to his swimming trunks, complete with cap and goggles. Not sure why, but good for him. And yes, they riot and they manage to beat down the superpowered robots and knock the master computer out of Madame Sarugi's hands, preventing her from doing anything. By accident, of course. Could you imagine if they figured out the plot right now and they were just stuck in between all these angry civilians? Oops. And then, of course, through the power of hope and friendship, ugh, and without much build-up or explanation, Cat Noir and Ladybug can reverse the detransformation just in time and can now use their powers as much as they require without powering down. Which, well, yeah, that's a bit of a power boost. And it is probably necessary for them to compete with Gabe at the top level, I suppose, considering how many powers he has. Although I do think the stakes would have been a lot higher if they remained unable to do this for this particular arc. But whatever, I'm not the writer. Ms. Bustier then destroys Chloe's sash, deacumatization, and then Chloe's dad drags her away to disown her and ship her off with her mum. What a great dad he is. Seriously, this dude deserves his own video just to revisit all of his personal failings. What a loser. Lila then steals the laptop, abandons her former ally, and so Chloe's all but finished. Oh, and all the kids tell Miss Bustier right now to run for mayor, which she does. But wait, now I'm very confused. If the party, the end of your dance, is set for this evening, and it's already dark in Paris, which is only an hour ahead of London, and the next episode is set that same night, how do Kagami and Adrian arrive during the day as you see on the news broadcast? Is that like a fake alliance ring simulation? And also, how are they watching the news at sunset before deciding to go back to Paris? And on top of that, how is the BBC already announcing that Miss Bustier is a candidate for being elected if the kids only just gave her an idea? 
Did she just walk up and say, hey, I think I should be the mayor? And every political party was like, yes, 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 you can represent us. It makes no sense. It is so stupid. I, uh, my body's shutting down. Meanwhile, Chloe's already on her private jet where her mother calls her a disgrace. Not for being a bad person, but for failing. <laughs> This family, I tell you what. And then the episode teases you with a last second change of heart where Chloe seems sad that she no longer has Sabrina by her side and she might call her to make peace. But nope, psych, awful to the end. And here is where we get that lead into the next episode. As Gabe yells at Adrian and tells him they're going to London straight away and Adrian calls Marinette crying on the phone and tells her what's happened and Marinette then rushes to the airport somehow catching up and getting past security to try and have their goodbye. Based Chad Gorilla then helps Adrian get off the plane long enough to share a kiss, and then they're both pulled away. And my god, Gabe is such a piece of shit, by the way. Contrasts heavily with Gorilla, who's just the best boy. I mean, are those tears in his eyes when he buckles Adrian back in? Yes, Gorilla! My man! But yeah, get hyped for Gabe to crumble to dust. And I do think that this final scene would have been far more sad if we hadn't already seen what happens next. But yeah, this last little chunk of the episode, it was still quite decent. And then we finish with Marinette slapping down Chloe when she calls her to reveal what she knows. And Chloe crying alone on the plane. Damn, well, I guess that's the end of Chloe's arc. See ya never. I can't believe this is where Asterix hate boner has led us to. Remember when she seemed like she was getting a redemption in like season two? Yeah. Same. And so yeah, that's the end of the video. A decent enough episode, although it's just the culmination of a lot of plot points that were either silly or just outright bad. Chloe the mayor being the one that comes to mind, or just her whole arc in general. So yeah, I don't think I was a massive fan of this one. And so with all that being said, I'll just remind you these are just my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. What do you think of the episode? You like it? Hate it? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know.